Welcome to MWeb's Entrepreneur Zone. I'm chatting with Gerard today. Gerard is from Ravonia Bed and Breakfast. Welcome. Nice to be here. Tell us about your bed and breakfast business. Well, the bed and breakfast started off with uh, two rooms when the children left home. And uh, it was more as a fun thing. But when, uh, when we were in trouble, financial trouble, then we decided to uh, extend it to what we are today. Prior to the, um, this, I had an engineering business, uh, which I also started basically from scratch for, and ran it for 15 years. We were the leaders in our field. And then in 96, the duties changed on steel structures and the imports kept, came flooding in. And I just saw we weren't going to make it. So we took the hard decision and liquidated the business. We lost everything except for our property. And no car, no pension, no job. Start from scratch. This was at the age of 56. Then I was working at one stage, working on the mines, and I thought this is no, no fun. Try to get something where I can work at home. So uh, we had the big property, uh, 6,000 square meters in Livonia, and we decided let this make work for us. So we mortgaged our house to the maximum and built six more rooms as a guest rooms. And I hired a manager, a young girl, to, to run that, and that worked. Two years down the line, we did it again. We mortgaged the next house we'd built and built another five rooms, and that worked. And we've been building uh, every second year since then. We've been adding more rooms. We're now up to 43 rooms. So it's quite a story uh, of, of your life of being quite an entrepreneurial person, but different businesses. What are the core skills that you think make it successful? Well, firstly, you know, I, I do have a, a degree and I have a management degree as well. And I think it's the experience we have, but also I think understanding the market, understanding what the needs are and understanding what that industry really requires. Now, my wife and I do a lot of traveling and we stay at guest houses and things, and we see what works and what doesn't work. And uh, for all these things, you look at the, at the guest, our customer, what, what is his requirements? Meet that, and then run your f a business as efficiently as pos possible, and get the right kind of people to work for you. In the service industry, the right people and the experience that they give to the guests is so important. How do you manage your staff to give that experience? They share in the profits and uh, I've got various schemes for the managers and for my staff but everybody uh, scores when, uh, based on the, occup the occupants we have. So if any bad egg there will affect everybody. So we all pull together and uh, my staff are well rewarded, well looked after and I think the biggest compliment I had was at our dinner at the end of last year uh, after you know, saying all the speeches one of my staff members stood up and thanked my wife and I for what we do for them. And I think getting that uh, thing is getting that uh, recognition from the staff. That was one of the, uh, really, uh, it meant something to me. How did you get your name out? You started with uh, two rooms and, and have built up to a substantial number of rooms now. How did you get that marketing out there? The marketing, it was, was basically two uh, legs of it. The one was direct marketing going to corporates, knocking on the doors and tell them we have a guest house. And the other was through the internet. Now, oh, having a good website is essential. And uh, this is what my wife does. She keeps it updated. And also the biggest uh, factor on that is the guest comments on your website. Now, uh, there's a web um, a, a portal called TripAdvisor, which we've used overseas when, when traveling. And we find most of our guests, that uh, c c new guests we get, or is what they read about us on TripAdvisor. Now this is the unsolicited comments from the guests. And based on what they have said, we build our company. And they've, the most common compliment was that uh, the staff are friendly and helpful, the rooms are spotlessly clean, and the breakfast is great. And we focus on that. For people that are getting into the hospitality uh, industry and looking at opening a, a bed and breakfast or a guest house, what are the key learnings that you've had and that you would impart to someone that was moving in that direction? Well, the first thing is location. Um, for instance, I would be hesitant to start a guest house uh, where it's seasonal, unless you're that way inclined and it's a hobby. But uh, where we are in Sandton, we're right in the hub of the industry. So, and uh, 
also seeing what, those, what type of guests you have and what their needs are. We deal mainly with the corporate uh, visitors, a lot from overseas. And um, you must be able to be flexible enough to, uh, to accommodate and understand the, the guests you're having from Ukraine, from Germany, from America, uh, Australia, wherever it is. And uh, to be understand what their needs are. What market did you target specifically when you started out? A major market is the uh, consulting engineers, IT companies, uh, pharmaceutical companies, people that bring people here for training. Tell us some of the difficulties and some of the rewards of, uh, of a family business. The, the younger family members, our, our children, are mainly investors, right? So, uh, but they leave the running of the business to me. But having a, uh, my wife, myself, we run very well as a team. Now, uh, she looks after the garden, I look after the buildings. Uh, she looks after the website, I look after the guests in the morning and also wherever you know, and uh, attend to that. Also the financial control I do myself. One of the difficulties, um, having chatted to people that run bed and breakfasts and guest houses, is that uh, the distinction between kind of your private life and your work life. How have you managed that balance? Yeah, th this is a difficult one. Um, we lived on the premises initially, and we just found we had no privacy whatsoever. You were having guests, for, your own guests for dinner, and the telephones ringing, and the, the other guests arriving needed attention. It didn't work. So we bought a house very close by, it's 100 meters from there, and we live there. I'm at work in the morning for breakfast. I'm there at, at uh, half past six in the morning, and this is a very important time to be there when, they, when the guests have breakfast and interact with the guests, and also in the evening when they start booking in. Your interaction with the guests is obviously really important to the experience. Um, it can't always go right. How do you deal with situations where something doesn't work out? When something doesn't work out, um, then um, the one would immediately try and rectify and put it right. The guest is never wrong. So if something is, is uh, well, fortunately we haven't had too many cases like that, but immediately don't, be, don't attack him, understand him, be, be sympathetic to his, to his needs and fix it up as soon as possible, and then also give them something that they'll appreciate. The times we have had guests that are unhappy, uh, we immediately rectified it, apologized, and uh, saw that it never happened again. You've spoken a lot about the importance of having a good website and of TripAdvisor. Have you used social media, so Facebook and Twitter? Oh yes, we have all that, yes. But again, that's my wife's part of, of the ship. She looks after that, and uh, no, we definitely use that. How effective it is, I don't know at this stage. But uh, whatever we're doing uh, it must be right because we are running at a very high occupancy. And actually, we are re referring so many guests away to other guest houses. Uh, I'm sitting in near the front office and I hear how many things are referred to other people. We just haven't got enough space to accommodate everybody. We need to build some more rooms. We are building it, <laughs> right? <laughs> but the other thing I would like to mention is um, that uh, about 10 years ago, I got the guest house in our area together and we formed an association and we worked together. So, and we've got a, a website, a joint website for our whole association on which one can see at any time how many rooms are available on any of the guest houses for the next two week period. Where to next for your business? The other fields we could look at is on the lower end, young uh, university leavers starting a career that want a small nursery room and willing to share facilities. And the other end is the young couples in apartments. Now whether I'll go into that, uh, we'll see. Gerald, that brings us to the rapid fire questions. What's the best advice you've ever received? That was the take a loss and get out. And your best moment as an entrepreneur? Winning the AA awards for being the top guest house in our field in South Africa. And your biggest mistake? Initially, not getting the right person for the job as managers. What quality do you look for in people that you work with? Give me a person who is very enthusiastic, like can move mountains. What quality do you think an entrepreneur needs to succeed? Hard work and guts. And the biggest inspiration for you as a small business owner? No, it's a, a person like Saul Kirzner, who started off working in his dad's hotel and was, became one of the biggest hotel magnets. What would you do differently? Uh, I would have been more careful with selecting uh, people when we started out at the guest house. What makes South Africa a good place to be a small business owner? There's such much opportunity here. Now we are a developing country and I could never have done this anywhere else in the world. And this is why if you take anything, there's a shortage of skills. 
So anybody who's got a skill and the guts to do it, there's opportunity here. What keeps you awake at night? New ideas. And what gets you going in the morning? I get up to go to the gym, keep fit, and I'm, I'm with my guests in the morning. Thank you very much for your time, Gerard. My pleasure. And thank you. We look forward to the coming weeks. We will bring you more South African entrepreneurs. I'm Paul Hobden. Thank you and goodbye.